What's up, YouTube, Facebook? Uh, appreciate y'all for tuning in with me today. It's going to challenge a lot of you guys' mind, especially if you're a Christian. I don't do this to pick on anybody. I do this with love. I love you guys. And uh, I just really, really want to free you guys' mind from this matrix. So I'm going to give you a lot of stuff to think about here today. Stay with me, please. I'm going I'm to I'm free you guys' mind with this stuff. I'm talking about I got some powerful information for you right now. So let's get right into it. I ain't going to talk your ear off. Let's get right into it. Before we get into it, let's point out one thing that the true creator is not the author of confusion. We all know that. I don't care what religion you are. It's safe to say that the true creator of the universe is not the author of confusion. Now we see a lot of confusion dealing with religion and I want to talk about some of that confusion today and I want to give y'all something to think about that I know a lot of you ain't thought about. So let's go. One thing I also want to say too before I get into this, I hope no one take offense to this, uh, Christians, Buddhists, no matter what your religion are, I just want to say you all are good people because sincerely you truly just want to do good within your heart to the creator of the universe no matter how you may identify with that creator and I love all of you you know and I don't care what your beliefs or your religion are I love you all and I have some powerful information for you right now so with that being said I want to just point out something to you guys that a lot of your religions really make you look foolish because when you try to defend these religions it's just you have no chance of defending these religions against an educated person uh, and I'm gonna I'm show you what I'm talking about and I'm gonna show you why a lot of educated people aren't very religious they're more spiritual but we'll get into that in a minute I have a lot of information to get into today now one thing you gotta realize about the Bible let's talk about the Bible or we can use this for any uh, sacred book in any continent referring to that religion in that land for like in the Middle East it would be the Quran but let's talk about the Bible since we in America the Bible is the best selling book of all times but it has never been on New York bestsellers list and a lot of Christians don't like that but you know why the Bible has never been on New York Times best selling list even though it's the best selling book of all time, it's because New York Times said it themselves. They don't know what category to put it in fiction or non fiction. This is why, when you was taught history in school, you weren't taught Jesus as a part of history. You was taught Alexander the Great and Columbus and all of those guys, but you weren't taught Abraham and Paul and all of that in school. You can't deal with belief when you're sitting up in class. The teachers know that. All the school systems know that. This video is going to be a little lengthy because I have a lot of stuff to jump into, but stay with me. I wanted you to think about that about the New York Times. They said they don't know what section to put it in. So that's something to think about right there. And with that being said, this is for you Christians because you guys truly believe that the Bible is perfect. You truly believe that the Bible uh, is the word of the true creator of the universe. You believe that this book is the word of God. We say that God is all-knowing and don't make any mistakes. So what I'm going to do today is show you plenty, plenty mistakes and flaws in your so-called perfect book that'll get you to challenge a lot of things that'll get you to start doing research and unlocking your own brain this is stuff that I'm pointing out to you today that the average pastor that the average bishop is not going to point out to you and I'm doing this with love so stay with me first of all I want to point some out to you Christians that you can go research for yourself it's a fact of Christian history that the earliest Gospels didn't record a resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the claim is supported in the oldest known complete Bible available to mankind today. So in other words, what I'm telling y'all is that 
the oldest Bibles that was found didn't even have a story in them about no resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that's what the whole Christian belief is based around. So that's something you should question. But as I go into this video, it's going to get deeper and deeper, so stay with me. What we're going to do now is talk about a lot of disagreements in the Bible, a lot of contradictions in the Bible. We're going to go through a lot of things that, that a perfect God who left a perfect inspired Bible, this is a contradiction. You're going to see what I'm talking about here today when I show you all of these contradictions that I found. And I've done all of this research, and you can go and do this research for yourself. I'm leaving all of this in the video for you. So when I, when I get through with this, you're going to have a lot of stuff to, to go and consider and think about. Now why do we want to ask the question, is the Bible perfect? Because if the Bible isn't perfect, then there's nothing sacred about it. The Bible, if the Bible isn't perfect, then that means that it did, didn't come from a perfect source. We all know that the Creator is perfect. So if this book comes from the Creator, then this book should be perfect. And that's what all Christians say, that the Bible is perfect. So that's a big question to ask. Is the Bible perfect? The reason we want to ask this question is because there are some contradictions to consider. And we're about to dive into some of those contradictions right now. And hopefully uh, you guys will see the contradictions and correct me if I'm wrong. So let's get right into it. We want to point some out that a lot of Christians say what well, the reason it's a lot of confusion in the Christian church and that is the reason that it's a lot of different denominations and everybody can't agree on this word, this perfect word, is that people take it out of context or that uh, you know, it ain't, it's to be taken metaphorically and not literally and all that. So automatically people saying what they think God wants you to do with the word. Point that create confusion right there. A lot of them say you got to understand it in its proper context. Check out how pastors be preaching their sermon and stuff. How they say turn to this scripture. And then they go to that scripture and they preach off of that. But the minute I do it, a Christian say read the whole book, read the whole chapter. You know, that's foolishness. A lot of Christians say God work in mysterious ways. How you know how God work? And if it's mysterious, maybe it's just mysterious to you. You see what I'm saying? All of these are opinions that people put on this so-called perfect God that they're supposed to be worshiping. Now let's point out some of these contradictions in the Bible that a lot of y'all Christians probably never knew was in there. All of y'all thinking this Bible perfect. You thinking it's inspired by the Creator? I have questions for you. Explain all of these contradictions that I'm about to run across to you right now. So check this out. Should we kill? According to the Bible, this is a question I'm asking. Should we kill? Now, this is why I asked the question. Because if you look at Exodus 20, 13, it says, Thou shalt not kill. If you look at Leviticus 24 and 17, stay with me now, it say, And he that killeth any man shall surely be put to death. Exodus 32, 27 say, Thus saith the Lord of God Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and slay every man his brother, companion, and neighbor. It just said in Exodus 20, 13, Thou shalt not kill but it turn around here in Exodus 32 and 27 and God say every man put his sword by his side and slay every man his brother, companion, and neighbor. This God telling these people to slay him. He just said thou shalt not kill. This is just some of the confusion. This is just a contradiction here that I got to ask. This is not me people. This is in the book. I got more questions for you Christians. Stay with me. Now God said thou shalt not kill but if you look at Samuel 15 verses 2 and 3 and 7 and 8 you will see where God said thus saith the Lord go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that have and spare them not but slay both man and woman infant and suckling ox and sheep camel and ass 
God said, go in there and slay everything, the children, the infants. I want you to utterly destroy it. It said right there in your Bible in, in the book of Samuel, your God said, destroy even the ox and the sheep. The same God that said, thou shalt not kill. Let's move on. Let's get off killing. Should we tell lies? This God said in the Bible, thou shalt not lie. It's saying in Exodus 20, 16, thou shalt not bear false witness. It's saying in Proverbs 12, 22, lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. But then it turn around and say in Kings 22, 23, the Lord have put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets. And the Lord have spoken evil concerning thee. Now the same God that just said thou shalt not lie turned around in Kings 22 and 23 and said the Lord have put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets. So the prophets didn't have no lying spirit in them at first. The, your God came alone and put the spirit in their mouth to lie. So even if they did tell a lie, it wasn't their fault. Because your God just said it right here in Kings 22, 23. The Lord have put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets. Your God play these type of games. He go around putting lies in people's mouth. And at the same God that's saying, thou shalt not lie. Get real. And here go your God right here doing another evil act. Look in 2 Thessalonians 2 and 11. And it say, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Look at that in 2 Thessalonians. The same God that said thou shalt not lie. He telling you right here in 2 Thessalonians 2.11. For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. So this God saying, I'm going to make these people delusional so they can be subjective to believing a lie. The same God that said, thou shalt not lie. Look at how much confusion and, and stupidity this is. But this is your book. This is your holy book. This is your Bible. Let's keep on going with it. All I'm doing is showing you right now some stuff that a lot of y'all don't even find in the Bible on your own. A lot of you Christians read the same scriptures over and over. If you read this Bible, you'll clearly see these contradictions. You'll clearly see... All of this confusion in the Bible, why is all these different denominations, but everybody's saying the Creator is perfect and that the book is perfect. And I'm showing you all of these flaws, all of these contradictions. Now explain them to me. Let's keep going. I got some more for you to explain to me, Christians. Who was Joseph's father? Because in Matthew 116, it say Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus. Now stay with me. In Luke 3.23. It says Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age. Being the son of Joseph. Which was the son of Heli. So in Luke. It's saying that. Joseph's father name is Heli. And in Matthew. It's saying that Joseph's father name is Jacob. Which one is it? Is it, is it Heli or is it Jacob? We don't know according to your perfect Bible. But let's keep going though. Let's question something here about your God's omnipotence according to the Bible. In Jeremiah 32, 27, it said, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Then it say in Judges 1, 19, And the Lord was with Judah, and he drave out the inhabitants of the mountain, but could not drive out the habitants of the valley because they had chariots of iron. Your omnipotent, all-powerful God is saying in the Bible in Judges 1.19 that the Lord was with Judah and he drove out the inhabitants of the mountain, but he couldn't drive out the inhabitants of the valley because they had chariots of iron. This Oh, all-powerful Lord that got control over all the planets and stars, supposedly. He couldn't drive out the doggone inhabitants of the valley because they had chariots of iron. And your God couldn't beat them, this omnipotent God. This in the Bible. This is questions I got for you. Explain all of this to me. And watch how stupid you look trying to defend all of this contradiction stuff. 
even the people that created it don't even try to defend it because they know it's all stupidity and ain't none of it real. So y'all look stupid trying to defend all of this stupidity. Now let's keep on going. I still got more questions for you Christians about y'all perfect Bible. Was Jesus such a peaceful God? Let's see. It's saying John 14, 27, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. But then it's saying Matthew 10, 34, think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Matthew 10, 34, read that and explain it to me, Christians. This the same God that said, peace I leave with you. May peace I give unto you. In John 14, 27, he said, peace I leave with you. And then they turn around in Luke 22, 36 and say, then said he unto them, he that have no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. The same God that's talking all this peace said, if you ain't got a sword, you need to sell your clothes and go naked and have your sword. I got more contradictions for y'all in this Bible. Check this out. It's saying Matthew 5, 22, whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hell foul. Now that's Jesus speaking. He said if you call somebody a fool, you're going to be in danger of hell's files. But look what it say right here in Matthew 23, 17. This the same God that just told you if you call somebody a fool, you're going to be in danger of hell files. And this is Jesus speaking. He said, ye fools and blind. The same God that just told you if you say fool, you're going to be in danger of hell files. In Matthew 23, 17, he said, ye fools and blind. And went on, if you turn to Psalm 14, 1, it said, the fool have said in his heart, there is no God. He just told you if you say the word, you're going to hell. These just simple contradictions I got. Check this out. It said right here, no man have seen God at any time. That's in John 4, 4 and 12. John 1 and 18 even say, no man have seen God at any time. All right. But Genesis 32 and 30 say, for I have seen God face to face. It's saying John 6, 46, not that any man have seen the father, save he which is God, he have seen the father. Meaning Jesus, the only person ever seen the face of God. But if you turn around and go to Exodus 33 and 11, it say, And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend. These are contradictions right here in your face. It's saying Deuteronomy 6 and 4, the Lord our God is one Lord. Then it say in Genesis 1 and 26, and God said, let us make man in our image. In Genesis 1 and 6, God said, let us make man in our image. Now check this one out. This is something y'all probably never thought about. Read Deuteronomy 6 and 4. It say the Lord our God is one Lord. That's in Deuteronomy 6 and 4. Turn around and go to Genesis 1 and 26. And, and it say in Genesis 1 26. And God said let us make man in our image. Think about that. In Genesis 1 26 it say... And God said, let us make man in our image. Who was God talking to? It said right there in Genesis 1.26, let us make man in our image. But it tells you in Deuteronomy 6, the Lord our God is one Lord. But Genesis 1.26 saying, God said, let us make man in our image. That's just another contradiction y'all got to explain to me. Another thing I want you Christians to do. Go and read Genesis 18, 23 through 33, and you will see where Abraham got God to change his mind about the minimum number of righteous people in Sodom. So you will see that Abraham even got your perfect God to change his mind about something. These are just flaws now that I'm pointing out to Jonah you. Jonah 3.10 
and God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. So God actually repented in Jonah 3.10. This, this is a question you got to ask yourself. Are we punished for our fathers and mothers sins? That's a question that we got to think about. Are, are you going to get punished for a sin that, that your mother did? Because according to the Bible, yes. But according to the Bible, no. Because the Bible is a bunch of foolery and contradictions. I'm going to show you why. Check these scriptures out right here. It's saying Exodus 20 and 5. For I, the Lord, the God, thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. So Exodus 20 and 5 shows you that the God says that, yeah, I do punish the children for the sins that they fathers committed. But this same God turns around and say in Ezekiel 18 and 20, the son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. That's just another contradiction. Big, plain, simple contradictions right in y'all face that y'all don't question or refuse to see because you're not doing enough research. Look at this. He just told you in Exodus 20 and 5 that he visited the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and then he turned around in Ezekiel, in Ezekiel 18 and 20 and say the son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. This is why there's so much confusion in the church. This is why they say in Psalm 145 and 9 that the Lord is good to all. It's saying Deuteronomy 32 and 4 that a God of truth and without iniquity and just and right is he. Then it's saying Isaiah 45 and 7 I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Check that out. In Isaiah 45 and 7, the same God that said the Lord is good to all, turn around and say in Isaiah 45 and 7, I make peace and create evil. These are all contradictions in your Bible. I didn't make them up. Look at Lamentations 3 and 38. It say, out of the mouth of the Most High proceedeth not evil and good. He telling you that God said Lamentations 3 and 38, out of his mouth proceeded evil and good. God himself telling you out of his mouth proceeded evil and good. Read it for yourself. And if you still want to question what I'm saying, go and read Jeremiah 18 and 11. It say, thus saith the Lord, behold, I frame evil against you and devise a device against you. Boy, that's some wicked stuff right there that your Lord doing. Read in Jeremiah 18 and 11. It say, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I frame evil against you and devise a device against you. This your Lord talking like that. This good Lord right here that said in Psalm 145 and 9, The Lord is good to all. Turned around in Jeremiah 18 and 11 and said, Thus saith the Lord, behold, I frame evil against you. Look at all this stupidity. Look at how contradictory that is. Now you see why it's so much confusion. But y'all say God is perfect. The true creator is perfect. Could it be what you got ain't the true creator? Because while all you got is confusion according to this research. You go and look these scriptures up and tell me am I reading them wrong. Tell me ain't this a bunch of contradictions. And if you still think I'm reading them wrong, explain this one to me then. It's saying James 1 and 13, let no man say, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. That's what it's saying James 1 and 13. It's saying, let no man say, I am tempted of God. But wait a minute now. Go to Genesis 22 and 1. It's saying, and it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. Look at all these contradictions. It's saying James 1 and 13, let no man say I am tempted of God. Then in Genesis 22 and 1 it say it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. And you want to know why there's so much confusion in the church. I can keep going with these. This video will be all day of contradictions. Like, for example... When you do good, should you do it out in the open for people to see it? Or should you do it in privately so, so nobody should see it but God? Let's see. This is a question I want to ask because when I was a Christian, 
I, I had confusion with that. You want to know why I was confused with that? Because I'm going to show you why. And I want one of y'all Christians to, to come explain this to me. It say in Matthew 5 and 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. But it say in Matthew 6, 1 through 4, take heed that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them, that thine alms may be in secret. So in one scripture, he's saying, let your light so shine before men that they can see your good works. And in the exact same book, he come back and say, do not ye out that their work, Pharisees works, all their works they do for to be seen of men. That's in Matthew 23, 3 and 5. He talking about the Pharisees, talking about because they do all of their good works in front of men. He talking bad about them. But this the same God that told him, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works in Matthew 5 and 16. And you want to know why all this confusion going on. Do this research for yourself. All you got to do, you can just put in Bible contradiction. All of this stuff out there, go and do the research for yourself. For example, here go another contradiction. Does God change his mind? Now all Christians say God don't change his mind because God perfect. Humans change their mind because they ain't sure, because they make mistakes. But a perfect God don't change its mind. But according to this book, there goes some contradictions. There goes some questions I got for you Christians. And Malachi 3 and 6 is say, for I am the Lord, I change not. That's in the book. That's in your book. It say, for I am the Lord, I change not. Let's see the contradictions in the Bible concerning that topic. God telling you he don't change his mind. What the Lord says in his mind is final and it is perfect, meaning God don't change his mind. But now check this out. But in Exodus 32 and 14, it turn around and say, And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. Because in this, in this doggone scripture, God had punished his people. Then God turned around and repented for punishing his people. Now, Exodus 32 and 14, it said, And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. So God thought to do evil unto his people to punish them. But then the Lord changed his mind according to the scripture and repented of it. The same God that said, I change not in Malachi 3 and 6. That's just another contradiction. Explain these contradictions to me about this perfect book, about this perfect God. It's all a bunch of foolishness. And if you don't think it's a bunch of foolishness, I'm still not done with you yet. All of these contradictions I'm showing you. Look at this contradiction. It's saying Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, for by grace are ye saved through faith, not of works. Then they turn around and say in James 2, 2 and, 2 and 24, ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Make up your mind, which one is it? Paul said himself, God ain't the author of confusion. But all this confusion I'm pointing out to you, and you can go and research it for yourself. So all of this stuff I'm showing you here today, you can go and research and pull up all of these scriptures that I'm pointing out to you today. And if I'm wrong, you can correct me. Because it all seems like a bunch of contradictions to me. And it's clear that I can't be wrong based on the fact that even you Christians can't agree with each other. Even y'all got all of these different denominations. There's over 10,000 of them. And you can check out my other video where I'm showing you the video about the Christian denominations. Uh, just check out the channel and go through these videos that I'm putting out. And free y'all mind, man. I do these because I love y'all. And because the truth is the only thing that can set you free. If you do the research for yourself, you will see that the true creator of the universe ain't no creator of confusion. And I'm showing you all of this confusion right there in your book. All of these contradictions. You can't say I'm wrong. Can't none of you Christians agree with each other. So you can disagree with me all you want. Because y'all can't even agree with each other. But everybody do agree that God is perfect. That the God of the universe 
ain't no creator of confusion. But yet we all seemingly got all this confusion and can't agree with one another. Even amongst your own religion, you got thousands of denominations. I'm showing you right here where all the confusion at. It ain't amongst the people, y'all. The confusion is with the book itself. The book itself is stupidity. We need to put the books down and get back to nature. It's not us, y'all. We, we don't, it's nothing wrong with us, y'all. It's something wrong with these religions that they got us bound to. And that's what I'm showing you here in this video. All these contradictions. All you Christians talking about the Bible is perfect. And I just showed you all them contradictions. Now I want you to argue with every last one of them contradictions. How can you argue with every last one of them contradictions that I just showed you? I want you to do that. And watch how stupid you look trying to defend this book. Even the people who made the book know that it ain't, that it ain't of God. They know that it ain't right. That it ain't perfect. But y'all so ignorant and you refuse to do the research. In the court of law, who you think will win? Your belief of all of this research that I'm showing the judge why I don't believe it. This is why I don't. This is why it's so much confusion. Y'all can't even agree. Even you Christians can't agree with each other. And want to know why I don't agree with it. Look at all these contradictions. I know that the true creator of the universe is perfect. That's why I got away from this crap because this is stupidity. All this contradiction. I'm going to be doing more videos in the future where I'm pointing out more contradictions to you. I can do y'all a day long video just pointing out contradictions. That's how many of them in the Bible. All of this confusing y'all. Wake up people. The true creator didn't intend for it to be this way. Can't y'all see this? I'm not the antichrist. I'm not some false prophet. I love y'all. If you wake up and open your mind, you'll see that the people that gave y'all this foolishness, they don't even believe it they self. They don't even believe it. Free y'all mind, man. I don't want to be too long here. I just wanted to do this video because I was doing some research and I just had to share all of these contradictions with y'all Christians. Talking about y'all Bible is so perfect. Show me why. Is, did this seem perfect to you? Ain't all of these imperfections? I would agree. Well then, your Bible ain't perfect, which proves that it's not of the true creator, because the true creator is perfect. So don't get mad at me, y'all. Just do the research for yourself and correct me if I'm wrong. I love y'all. Peace.